lovely um, to talk to, oopsie, I pressed the wrong button. Now, okay, I'm now It's so lovely to talk to both of you. Um, uh, a great movie. I, I love Thank horror you. movies and I love a good slasher movie. So I was very excited. Oh, to cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're, thank you for taking the time. Oh my God, of course. And um, I have a lot of questions. So I'll try to like- Oh, cool. Yeah, great. <laughs> David, um, you wrote and directed this yeah. film. And um, I'm always just kind of curious, what made you want to make this particular film and where did the idea come from? So, uh, great question. So I got into horror in the mid nineties. Uh, I didn't necessarily grow up fully knowing a lot about horror, understanding horror. I grew up like a Rocky fan and Rambo and I'm a typical early eighties, eighties kid, but um, certainly was always interested in horror. And then around the nineties, I scream just like hit me in the face. And I was like, this is so cool. It, hits on you know comedic tones but the 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 killer is 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 could could be a guy that a crazy guy in town or, or two guys in that case that are wearing you know something that's sort of you just grab off a rack and i love the idea of the mask so for me i came up with the idea for burial ground massacre in considering the films that sort of stimulated me but at the same time i you know we're, we're out here in new england and growing up in new england one of the things you hear is about the Native American lore. And it's all out of respect and, and it's, it's historical and it's um, based in what, what really happened on these lands, but also, you know, whether it's somebody's grandfather or your uncle or the, 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 the guy down the street, you hear a lot about, you know, you're standing on Native American land or the, or the reservoirs haunted or this princess died here. So we based it on true stories, specifically a true story, uh, with regard to the, to the house that the casino uh, was formerly on. And I thought that that was terrifying. I thought, gee, what if in, you know, 2021, uh, a, you know, a character kind of assumed this sort of path to go after this, this, you know, Native American artifact, but was a guy very scary that put on a rudimentary mask that he made in a workshop and threw on some dark clothes and all of a sudden is outside of the porch while these, you know, beautiful kids are, are having a party. So that's really all it was. And Chelsea, how did you guys meet? And um, what was the process of that, of casting Chelsea and Chelsea, you finding out about this project? Yeah, um, so David and I have actually worked together um, in the past. So we've been on a couple projects together. So I already um, had known uh, who David was. Um, he did, they sent me over the script, him and Eric Weinstock, and I read, read it right away. And I absolutely loved the character of Adriana. I just thought she was such a fun, strong, um, independent woman who also had some deeper layers. You know, at home, she kind of still has a sick aunt and has to deal with d deeper things that go on. But when she turns it on and she's there at the party it's like a different person you know the lights kind of come on and she's fun and she can re relax and release and then um and then at the end of the day she still ends up having to be that strong character at the end so um just the way that they wrote the character was something that really drew me to the uh project i really love any projects that have a strong female lead you know so that was something that i i really looked forward to uh, portraying in this character which i mean which i love about good horror is that you I, it's so funny because people kind of think about maybe sometimes we're being objectified in horror, but I always think it's the opposite. If you have a good horror movie, it's always a really strong right. female lead if it's a good film, um, which you definitely are in this film. Um, I'm very interested in the production notes too. I was reading about um, the um, research you did uh, even more with like the mask and the jewelry and making right. sure things were accurate. I wanna know if you right. could talk a little bit about the design of the mask and even like some of the web, like the weapons in it, how um, yeah. you kept yeah. it authentic. Yeah, so uh, the, the way I went about that was I wanted the mask to have a significant striking look on camera. So the kind of washed out white, the high cheekbones, you know, hiding the eyes. But at the same time, um, I sketched it on a, a this sounds like a, a cliche, but I sketched it on a napkin. And I thought, you know, white is sort of that ghost face or that, that kind of departed look. I wanted an ashy feel and I love the sort of tribal kind of um, references with the red and the grays and the, the dark tones. And then I found uh, this amazing mask maker, professional mask maker named William Rockwell, who definitely is worth mentioning because he put his heart and soul and his craft into making the Damon mask. And he's the one that took it to the next level. It's made out of leather. It's, it's, it, it's made in an old school, uh, 
the traditional Native American style with the leather tooling and the dyeing of the of the leather and, and we even you know go as far as to kind of have paints kind of be developed from organic materials and he in the in the and then the leather straps he's the one that made it so impactful and powerful and then uh you know it, for me that was scary um there's a moment there's 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 a little humanism in in the mask uh where there are moments when you see him and oh, he might be thinking but then it's like boom and uh that's that's all it was i wanted it to be super original everything's been done in horror we've seen it all i think this is fresh and new and different because it looks like something a guy made in his you know on his workbench with leather tools and all the stuff you see in the movies really how it was made and uh with regard to the weapons i mean for me the the idea of the tomahawks is traditional there's a history there the feathers and, and it, they were made in the traditional way, but they're, they're, they're dangerous and deadly. And we thought that that proved to be something that would look ominous on camera. It, it definitely does. Um, and it adds, I think, to the overall feel, like just that authenticity of it. It makes it scarier. And like you said, the mask, because it, it does look almost like it, human features. Absolutely. Yeah, like, but we wanted Damon to be like, he, he's in 2021. He's, he's a real human being that, has this ancient kind of history, but the compound bow that more powerful than, you know, the wooden bow things that, so, you know, he's in just basic black, the hoodie and distressed hoodie. So we, we took uh, traditional uh, ancient historical elements and then said, what would happen in 2021? And that's why I think he's scary because he's, uh, you know, he, he's relevant to what he would have access to now. We wanted all of the kills to just be very realistic, you know, and we all talked about that, about having everything be like a guy that really came into your house and this could actually really happen, you know, that's what's terrifying about it is that, you know, this could happen to you, you know, so that's what the scary elements of all the kills were that we wanted to make them very realistic and rooted in truth. They are, the kills are definitely very realistic and scary. And I was reading that you, you both worked with um, professional wrestlers right. yeah. to choreograph some of the kills. Um, I was just kind of wondering um, how that was and what was the process of that? Yeah, I'll let David elaborate on that because he did yeah, a lot of those Yeah, uh, so, so there's, there's uh, three professional wrestlers in the movie. I have a background having trained in pro wrestling and performed yeah, in pro awesome. wrestling. Uh, and uh, I said to the guys, we said to the guys, let's just go for it. Uh, of course, stunt safety, some choreography is involved. But if you see in the film, no doubles, they threw themselves around, they, they, they got rough. Uh, Travis Flip Gordon is a famous wrestler in, in Ring of Honor uh, promotion, which is like a, a second tier to WWE. He gets thrown over a fence. I mean, it's very acrobatic. It was highly stylized. It was a little dangerous. I think it translates on film because they really went for it. And it's like a, when it's done right, it's a dance and it's meant to look real. And it, and it, and it was. They're, they're, they're making contact. They're hitting the ground. I have a, a big stunt background. It was the first movie where I trusted these guys to do it the way they wanted because I, I they've done it a, a thousand times in a wrestling ring. Mm -hmm. You're around concrete, you're around fence posts, you're around hard ground, it's dark out, but they did it. And it, it was hard to reel them back a little bit because sometimes we would be like, you don't need to go that hard. The camera's over here. It's not going to see anything. Right. But they were just so used to doing that, that they were full out every single time. Um, in fact, actually one time Vinny, uh, he tossed our actor into the wall and he actually went into the wall and a dent like went right into the wall like this. It looks incredible though. So we kept it in the in the movie. So when there, when you see the uh, character Chase get thrown in there, it's like a hole that goes right in the wall. That was real. So. Uh, <laughs> But um, but it looks great. So we were excited to see it all kind of come together. Did you have to do any special training for that, Chelsea? Or have you done anything this physical before? Um, I'm actually a dancer and I also did do some stunt training um, in LA. So I have done some physicality stuff like this. So I actually have continued to actually take more stunts. And I actually just did a film a couple months ago where I get thrown off of a boat in the middle of the ocean. And I did my own stunts for that as well. So, um, so I'm actually really enjoying going down the road of doing my own stunts. And I hope to kind of elaborate and do even more one day. I love that you guys, I mean, I didn't know that um, until you just told me that you guys all did your own stunts. I think it definitely adds to the feel of the film um i think that's amazing Thank you. yeah we wanted it to be you know we wanted it to look kind of cool and real and you know the whole idea is like wow that 
but that would be kind of a, a terrifying way to die or or what have you so you know the bathtub the bag over the head the guy in the garage you know it's all like well that's how it would probably go down so i read too um so the manor that you ended up filming on is actually on native american ground yeah. Yeah, which so, i think is a whole nother amazing element that you're able yeah. to find a place that to yeah film, so, right? yeah we met with the homeowners uh turned out that it was a historical home you know in new england you see the homes that have little placards you know 1840, 1750. So this home was built uh, as a casino, not the big giant casinos you you you, you come to know in Connecticut or Rhode Island uh, in, or New York State out here, which are Native American casinos. Um, but this was the first incarnation of that built on uh, Native American land, and that's a factual story. And uh, the story that is referenced in the movie is all all true. I think that's I I love that, and I. I think that's amazing and makes it Thank even you. a little scarier. <laughs> um, oh, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, I wanted to ask you about Michael Madsen because um, he's such an amazing actor and has such a pedigree of work. Um, I kind of want to know about the decision to cast him and Chelsea, how was working with him? Working with him was absolutely incredible. So it was one of the things that I was, I was so nervous about it the night before. I remember being so nervous to be able to act opposite him then also have to be such a strong presence in front of him. You know, I, I attacked him right with a, a gun, you know? So that was a, um, it was a definitely a very strong presence that I needed to be able to put in front of him. So um, I just trusted myself and really went with it. And he was so incredible. He was the nicest person to work with and um, just really gave a lot back to me as an actor as well. So it made the experience just, so great he was the sweetest guy and we just had the great day that day and, it, and that day all we did was just that scene so it was great really? we could just focus just on that mm -hmm. and um and so it just made for a, a very great powerful ending i'm wondering um through this whole process david had, was there anything that you learned about yourself as a filmmaker in chelsea that you learned about yourself as an actress in this whole process of filming the film or something that surprised you i think for me um I was, I wanted the film to have something for everybody. And, you know, that was, that's an ambitious process on a low budget uh, independent horror film. Um, but I was excited because the team from our partner, Eric Weinstock, who, who wrote the script with me to the performances from the leads like Chelsea to the wrestlers, to the extended cast, to the crew, they were able to carry that vision and, and get all the pieces together that make the film have layers that I think are fun. There's something for everybody. I think people are gonna smile, laugh, get scared, tell a friend, hey, the mask was really scary. That's kind of unique. Uh, Michael Madsen's in this movie. Like I wanted to accomplish all that as a filmmaker and I think we were able to, and that was a challenge. And I, I, I think we did it. And in terms of learning about myself, it's just about the team. It's about, hey, we have this amazing team. We built it for a reason. I you know, entrusted her with the lead role. It's about trusting the team and, and learning um, that you have to go with the plan and, and making sure that um, you, you put that trust on, on the screen because uh, it, it only matters what you shoot, right? So you had to shoot it and make our days and all that. And uh, it was just all, it's about the team for me. It's about everybody. And I'm glad that um, the movie's out because I think people are going to see how fun it was. You know, it's a ride, you know, it's a ride. It, yeah. We'll see what people feel while they watch it. And what about you, Chelsea? Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I agree with you. I think the team was a, a really big strong point for this because we all wore a lot of different hats on this one. It was an independent film and we were also doing it during COVID. So that was also something that we really yeah, had to totally. learn and work through um, was figuring out how to make film differently now. You know, we weren't able to have all the extras that we needed to have. You know, there was a lot of different things that um, had limitations on us, but we were able to work through all of that. So for me, I think it was a lot of problem solving and being able to just do film and it completely different way than we've ever had to with all of the new COVID restrictions, you know, and, and still being able to make a great project. So I think that was just a whole new learning uh, aspect for us on this film. I'm so glad that you were able to still film that because I think that was so many things were like kind of stunted. And I, I think it was so important to figure out a way still to create art. And so I'm yeah. so happy to hear that you were still able that you shot that during COVID and still able to find a way. That makes me very happy. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're going to, to make a film like this, you know, hey, look, our our band of, of faithfuls, our crew, our cast, we're going to go over COVID protocols. We're going to get approved to shoot. Yeah. 
we're going to go over the, we know we're going to make this movie, but you know, Hey, gee, is Michael Madsen going to be able to make this movie during right. COVID? Are we going to be able to travel all those things? And it came together and we, you know, we worked hard to make it work. Um, you know, and the filming during COVID was a massive challenge and we're lucky. I don't think we had to give up anything uh, as a result, a couple, you know, a couple of small components like Chelsea mentioned, we had to go like this on some of the locations and some of the wishes for scenes, but basically we were able to get it all in, which is uh, kind of remarkable, especially early on in COVID. A little bit different now, people know how to yeah. do this, but we had to learn a lot about how to do it. And we rewrote the script, you and Eric, uh, to actually be able to make it have more like one location. So we did it mainly at that house so we could keep, you know, COVID safe and really create that bubble. So there was some creative things that we did to be able to keep this moving forward in this time right now, so. I love that you said that because I think that's just in the spirit of like independent filmmaking is getting it made. Because being a movie is so hard to get anything yeah, to yeah, get it actually yeah. made and just not letting it stop you. I think that just kind of gives, yeah. I mean, that's just kind of a, um, tribute to the spirit of filmmaking and getting so much. getting things done. And I just, I love that you, the use of wrestlers, because I think there's I, some other filmmakers like the Soska sisters work with wrestlers too. And I think right. there's that physicality that lends itself so well to yeah. horror movies. I think it's so These smart. guys are so, are so talented. You know, they're, they're modern day uh, acrobats or they're modern day stage fighters. And they, they welcomed the, the three wrestlers in the film, Vinnie Marseglia, Travis uh, Lopez um, and then uh, Zane Bernardo, they welcome the opportunity to be in a movie because wrestlers want to be like The Rock, get me in a movie, get me in a movie. And I put a lot of wrestlers in movies and these young guys were so ambitious, so passionate, so dedicated, maybe overzealous with some of the fight stuff. That <laughs> it, it translated so well though, because um, you don't really have to, you know, you just kind of point to, to, to the camera and say, you know, go because they perform live yeah. hundreds of times a year and now they're having an opportunity to be in front of a camera where they can do a, a take another take and that was exciting to watch because they were so grateful gave so much and uh it adds a lot to the movie and then they have the fan base uh which you know we know will we'll follow them to the film which is is fun and cool for us as film yeah and i think there's such a crossover in fan bases too with wrestling and horror movies so i, I love yeah. that yeah no i, I think there really is i don't know who started that but yeah no I, I think it was maybe diamond dallas page in uh in ron ron's or no it's pipe it's roddy piper and they live oh, yeah. honestly, and right? they live yeah yes. yeah so piper is the uh, godfather of the crossover <laughs> the meshes. yeah and maybe kelsey now you could find a foray and you could start wrestling <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you know, I actually did go, I did train for a little bit actually after really? all of these guys. Yeah, I did do it a little bit. So mm -hmm. um, it was it was fun, but uh, more so I'd like to just put it towards the stunts. <laughs> she went to wrestling school and, and a very famous ex-WWE wrestler, Paul Roma, runs it here. And he said to her, no one has ever uh, accelerated as quickly. They had her on the top rope doing flips really? and on, on day was, one yeah i was flipping over this tall six foot guy and flinging him down over my legs off of the top rope i was like yeah. okay <laughs> that's it was amazing fun. i was definitely sore for a while after that i was like i don't know if i want to do this but that's amazing that you could do that i mean i, I that's very impressive to me and i i know I've, I've known a few wrestlers and it's just it's that's hard <laughs> yeah. it their body so bad but that's does, that's does. really impressive i love that yeah so not only are you a kick-ass character in the film in real life too <laughs> you gotta always try it something at once you know you i agree yeah. um what do you hope that audiences take away after watching this movie I hope that everybody just has a, like a really good time and just has a bunch of scares. You know what I mean? I think it's always great to be able to sit and watch a movie at your house and actually jump, you know? And so I really just hope that we put a lot of those elements in there. That's what our goal was, you know, to give you some good scares and just have a good time, enjoy a nice horror movie, you know? I, I, for me, I, I, I just want them to take the ride. You know, there's something for everybody. There's, there's, there's a pretty uh, girl next door lead. There's, uh, there's action, there's suspense. There's a little bit of the, uh, the, you know, the classic horror tropes with the slasher stuff. Um, there's, a, in my opinion, a very unique uh, uh, anti-hero in, in Damon. Uh, well, I shouldn't say anti-hero for the, for before the movie, people see the movie, but a very unique character in Damon that has a lot of interesting psychological layers. He's scary to look at. You don't really know what, what drives him. Um, it's also about the mask for me. I think it's, you know, I think we came up with a cool mask that, you know, is unique 
And um, I also, you know, there's, there's moments uh, for everyone. So I, I just would love for audiences to take the ride and spread the word and uh, have fun watching it. I was definitely scared and I'm always the genius that like watches a movie I, and always end up alone and it's <laughs> when I watch a scary movie, which is so then of course I'm very jumpy after. Well, we appreciate you saying that. We hope we didn't scare you too much. <laughs> I, I slept so so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. That's good. Yeah, I enjoyed there's it. A, and there's I thought a shot it was... in the trailer, you know, when when Damon kind of tilts and I was like, that's what I, that if there's one moment in the film that yeah. I was hoping would translate, yeah. that's the one. And he, hey, this guy could be in your house. You know, it's you know, yeah. what's behind the mask? It looks like a regular dude, maybe, it but um it's you know, it's so that that uh there are moments in there that I was really excited to, for people to see. Well, I'm very excited for it to come out. I think it, it's scary and it's great fun. I, I just think it's a fun movie to watch and it's the kind of thank film you. that you could watch over again and over again with friends. Oh, and thank you awesome. so much. Thank you, that yeah. means a lot. We appreciate that. <laughs> oh, you know, that was, uh, you know, it's got that, that little bit of that, uh, hey, you know, throw it on in college while you're all sitting mm -hmm. around at the party or, mm -hmm. or studying or, or whatever, because it's, it's, it, it's, it doesn't take itself too, too seriously, but there are layers that are historically interesting and accurate and you could talk about it if you wanted to or you could just tell a buddy to watch it so um we we wanted it to be that simple you know and that, that we're proud of that and then you have uh someone like michael madsen in the cast and that yeah. adds that that value to where people are like well it's you know who's he playing you know so yeah i think he immediately just um lends it, it uh, like a validity to any project he's on because you know it's going to be good if he's he's one of those yeah. actors if he's going to be in it you know it's going to be a good movie like it, it's gonna be good. we're right in the middle where yeah. the hurricane hit so it's been oh uh, my god like a weird power surge in the computer yeah the, everything just went off so yeah. oh whoa are you guys okay from the hurricane we're okay, we're good. Yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah. area is uh this part of connecticut on the rhode island border got hit hard that's where the hurricane landed right. so so sorry about that no, oh my God, no problem. I was like, I really insulted her. <laughs> <laughs> no, See you later. the opposite. We're like, we love her. It's so cool that she 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 stayed up and watched it. And oh my and God, of course, it. of course. I mean, I, I I am a horror lover, so it's definitely right up my alley. And it was really, it truly was a really interesting take, and it I I loved where it went. So it was we, a pleasure to watch that. it. And yeah, it was we wanted something thing. unique, you know. It, it's yeah. so easy to have something that looks like everything else of course i'm i've done a lot of horror i've produced a lot of horror dozens of films and i know what horror movie fans like and the temptation would be to go down that exact road and and nail it but i but we wanted the movie to be fresh unique maybe there are things that horror movie fans aren't gonna like but there are things that i think people will will definitely pay attention to and talk about and uh it was i think there's a lot of fresh takes in the movie that you know, you may or may not have seen before. Yeah, we try to do all the kills differently than things that you typically see. You know, um, like we did the bag over the head for one. We did the belt, you know, around the neck. We did, you know, some just different things that were in there that you don't see every day in your typical horror movie. So we wanted to have some just different elements that were there. Also the kid, uh, uh, Blaze Sarah, the actor, um, he, um, he he's a real ma magician. He's quite a famous magician now since, uh, Really? Last couple of years, yeah. So he, uh, that, that's a real trick that he did. And of course, there's that relationship between black magic and, and you know, ancient culture and, and the Native American lore and stuff. So we wanted to make, that was a real trick. He, he made us as the cast and crew kind of shocked by it, the, you know, so w that was really neat. So there's, you know, like I said, there's a lot in there. We packed a lot in there for a little movie. I think a lot of the actors I know, so they, they're from like New England. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We we wanted to go with with people that were on the um, on the way on their way up that we could kind of mold and craft into these characters, and we imagined certain actors in those roles. Chelsea being the kind of main one as Adriana, but um, we wanted a lot of faces in there that look like uh, you know, there's the you know, there's the kid uh, uh, across the street, uh, or there's the pretty girl next door, or you know, here's the guy that's kind of goofing off at the party. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of classic elements in casting, but at the same time, we had some fresh takes on it and some people that brought a lot to the, to the role. I like because they, they, they seem very relatable and, and very much like um, people that you have gone to college with, that you would have known, yeah. you know, growing up. And I play the crazy groundskeeper, Mr. Green, kind of neurotic, <laughs> because I really was losing it. 
in directing <laughs> the movie. So that that was just fun. I just kind of jumped in there and we were thinking about uh, casting somebody else. And I said, you know what? I think I, I, I'm so overtired. I'm so zany from all this. I think I'll just jump in. And and uh, so that was a lot of fun. I think it'll be a method actor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you both so much. Um, I really enjoyed the film a lot and um, oh, I'm excited you. for it to come out and for people, I think it's, we're, you know, it's getting closer to Halloween, so it's right around yeah. the time yeah, people kind of want to watch these films. Yeah. And it was a really interesting and unique new kind of, like you said, like every, the base of every like movie's kind of already been done. It's what yeah. little elements you could put in it to make it kind of fresh and exciting for people to see. And I think this definitely has a lot of those elements in it. Well, you know, we, we've screened it uh, internally, you know, the crew, the yeah. cast, uh, friends and family. And the, the cool thing for us so far, and this is where I feel lucky and grateful, and I think Chelsea could kind of echo this, is every person has liked something different. Even in doing the press, someone else has noticed different things. And that means that we put a lot on the screen, you know, that, you know, um, we think people are going to resonate with or find uh, fun or interesting or ask us questions about so we're grateful that we were able to pull that off because the temptation would be to make a linear project, um, you know, use the budget responsibly, um, but we, uh, we extended it out. So you got a feel for the world and where these characters are, you know, hanging out and, and what's gone wrong and how they end up and, and stuff. So uh, we, we're excited to see how everybody else reacts to it. And you mentioned too, that it was a smaller budget, but you can't tell from watching it. You really honestly oh, can't thank tell. You. You really you. can't. Oh, it was a big budget. It was a huge budget. <laughs> it looks like you can't tell, like you you look at it like compared to like a, a horror movie with a bigger budget. Oh, really, you, so you can't tell that one had. And a we should we should mention um in, in, in please if you're able to mention yeah, our cinematographer uh, our cinematographer Ryan Sweeney. He wanted to lens this in that cinematic uh, way to have you know a, a great um, every every moment look pr pretty on camera, and he did mm -hmm. a really great job. You know, despite limitations, and Ryan is a real artist who's worked with us for a long time. And this was his real kind of first opportunity to get super artistic and creative, but it's a horror movie, right? So you have to, you can't go too crazy, but yeah, you yeah. have to be able to, you know, so his relationship with Damon on, in, on the, you know, on the other side of the camera was really something that I was hoping would happen. And I set up and did as much as I could to make sure that happened. But Ryan did a great job of lensing this film and we're really uh, excited for what he does in the future because we thought he did a great job and thank you for mentioning that because we wanted it to look good as well so it looks it looks great it really yeah. does you. it's you can always tell yeah when there's like real talent working together because it thank doesn't you. have the look of of a, a you know a smaller budget movie yeah which is, it's hard <laughs> yeah. yeah no it is hard it is very hard and you you can put all the pieces together but how do those pieces work together are we running out of time? Are we running out of money? Does someone have a different idea or vision or, you know, what have you? So um, that, that was what was great about with this project too, is every now and then we were like, I'd call Ryan, you'd call Ryan and I'd be like, hey, let's just hop in the car real quick. Let's drive, <laughs> let's grab this, let's do this, let's do that. So it seemed like this project kind of continued to go on because we became such good friends throughout it too, that right. and we were all here and, you know, and everybody was kind of stuck during COVID. Yeah. So we had extra time to do things. So it did allow us to be able to pick up some smaller pieces that really added to the story altogether. And I got into filmmaking, you know, as a kid wanting to be a filmmaker in the nineties and, you know, the great, the great story that we all watched and paid attention to and heard about, and, and Hollywood still hears about him as Quentin Tarantino yeah. directing Michael Madsen in Reservoir Dogs. We all know limited budget and they were guerrilla style in LA and you know, people use credit cards and, and, and you know, to, to make it work. And I thought, gee, we have Michael Madsen. So this is like, I wanna push and get as many pieces as we could, even if we were doing like what Chelsea talked about, which is guerrilla filmmaking at, at times, because I wanted to get the cool car in there at the beginning of the movie. I wanted to have the weapons and Damon to have this complete look, you know, we would see a little bit of his lair, you know, let's build that set versus just having him walk around in the woods the whole time. Um, the house had to be interesting and historically related to the story. We wanted to get into the bigger real casino. We wanted to have all the payoffs happen at the end. And that was me as a filmmaker and all the team but my initial kind of thought being like you know hey let, let's figure out how we can do this because it's been done you know um great filmmakers have always tried to make the pieces work so it feels 
you know, wider and bigger and the scope's interesting. So you feel like, hey, maybe, you know, this kind of reminds me of my town, you know, it's late at night and, and there's shadows walking around my deck. And that was what it was about, you know, and Damon has these layers that like, that could be a, a, a person walking around or is there mysticism to him? We left that like wide open because that was what I thought was cool and interesting about him. And it makes it scarier too, because it, like yeah. you said, it, it's that believability. Like I love, I mean, I love like Freddy Krueger all that, but there, I mean, there's yeah. a distance in it because you know it's yeah, yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> now, I'm so glad you said that because yeah. I'm certainly so respectful of of the great the greats that you know have come before and um, the great uh, horror movie villains. Um, but there are there's there are some some of them. Um, you eh, you know that isn't gonna happen. You know yeah, you you know that the day like yeah. But you know, for 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 us, Damon, that there's there could be a guy floating around out there in the woods that you know sort of uh, has a, a gripe against society, and uh, you know it's it's not that complicated. He made a mask. He's in black. He's outside of your door. Um, you may not even know why. That that was interesting to us. And you don't. You, and, and what's scary is wow. Like you're saying that we're on this haunted property. That's such a simple thing, yeah. you know. It's kind of like, oh, I'm not supposed to be here. Why not? And then that was that was what was kind of interesting. And being from New England, there is a lot of that here. You know, we'll yeah, be, I'd... you know, the, you know, we're, we're talking about haunted graveyards, haunted houses, haunted tribal land. I mean, we grew up with that. And these, there's a lot of incidences or stories or or history or stories that got um, magnified that are based in reality, you know, and the East Coast is kind of a creepy haunted place at times. And I wanted, I just want to get that on, on screen because, you know, it's there, there are true stories that have kind of been similar to this. So. I mean, that's what makes it, I think, so fascinating. And like, I mean, that property was, it is on the native. Yeah, program, so. yeah, it absolutely is. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Thank you both so much. Thank you so much for talking yeah. to me and congratulations. Oh my God, I appreciate you talking to me. And I'm excited. We love, your, we love you that you were, you know, passionate about the movie and checked it out. Oh, yeah. And uh, we just, we're, we're happy to plug in all the details and tell the cool story how it was made and our hopes for the movie. And thank you again, truly, because oh, it, it, uh, it was a lot of work and we're proud of it. And we're happy to have the world see it, especially oh. the horror movie fans. So. <laughs> yes, I, I think they're going to love it. And um, I'm excited to see it. It seems like you guys have a, you and the cinematographer have now kind of have a good working yeah. ensemble of a crew too so i'm excited to see what comes next thank you. Well, yeah. we'll, do, we'll do it again real soon <laughs> thank you so much great thank you thank you so much have a good day thank you, you too so <laughs>